Open to Philippians chapter 3. Today, we, we had a powerful two days of deliverance. God did so much today. We're going to pray for baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're going to pray some more for healing. Uh, and today, I want to, because most of you here are from out of town. You're here. I want to leave you with something. A word from God, a direction from God that you can go back home and to begin to cultivate intimate relationship with God that you go home that you begin to grow in your relationship with God and grow in the knowledge of God deliverance is not a finish line deliverance is just a starting point deliverance is a starting point for your growth and knowledge in God is a starting point for your discipleship as pastor Vlad mentioned yesterday can I get a little bit on the monitors <clears throat> As Pastor Vlad mentioned yesterday that um, discipleship without deliverance is impossible. It's going to create a lot of frustration in your life. But when you receive freedom from God, when you got delivered, the next, you, it's not an arrival. It's not a time to begin to live for yourself. It's a time where you can begin to pursue God and a knowledge of God passionately. This is where you are unleashed. This is where the chains fall off and you can freely run after Jesus. Amen. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 8 says this, Apostle Paul says this, Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of, know, of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For the sake I have disregarded everything else, continuing all, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. And verse 10 says this, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His suffering, becoming like Him in His death. Jesus being on earth, walking with His disciples, training His disciples, in chapter, chapter, uh, John chapter 17 verse 3, he's praying his final prayer for his disciples. And he says this, Now that is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ who you have sent. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18 says this, But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Our goal and our pursuit is that we grow in the knowledge of Jesus. That we, like Apostle Paul says, that I disregard everything. That I count everything as garbage, as rubbish. To, to pursue the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To pursue the knowledge of God. See, because if you don't know God, you can't worship Him as God. You can only worship God to the level of your knowledge of Him. You can only serve God and be committed to God to the knowledge of your level and your, to the revelation that you have of God. Some of us, we struggle in our relationship in our relationship with God and our commitment to God is because we have very shallow knowledge of God. We struggle in the intimacy with God. We struggle to connect with God because we have very limited understanding of who God is, of His love for us, of His character, of who He is. Oftentimes we struggle in our prayer with God because we don't know who we're praying to. Oftentimes we come in our prayer to God and we beg Him as if He doesn't want to give us something. And we're like twisting His arm and trying to 
get him into submission God give it to me without understanding and knowing that all the good and perfect gifts come from the Father above and He's our Father, we are His children and we're not praying to squeeze it out of Him, we're praying to cultivate a relationship with Him, to cultivate intimacy with Him and then with simple petition, childlike faith, when we ask He gives it to us. Sometimes we strive to we, 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 we strive in our walk with God instead of living out of that place knowing that God loves us and living out not out of the place of striving and works but out of the place of sonship the out of the place that he's our father living out of out of the knowledge of God and Jesus' prayer for his disciple was Lord, that they might know you. I want to give you four practical things today as you're going to go home, travel back home. How to grow in the knowledge of God. First and foremost, it's the Word of God. Word of God is a love letter written to us from God. Word of God is, is what reveals the true nature of God. Word of God is true. There is no lie in it and it's that truth that sets us free. Word of God is what reveals the character of God, is what reveals the heart of God to us, is what reveals the intent of God for your life. Commit yourself to the reading of God's Word. But moreover, commit not just to the reading of God's Word but so that the Word begins to read you. It's a different type of reading where the Word of God not just uh, speaks to you on the cognitive level but it touches your heart. It transforms your heart. It transforms your life. Some two, two and a half years ago I begin to pray and ask God, Lord I want to know you more and God really put on my heart uh, instead of just reading through the Bible that, that, that year, three years now, instead of just going through the Bible um, like I would normally do, do a Bible reading plan and just go from Genesis to Revelation to read it through, but God really put on my heart just to take first books, first four books of the Gospel and just to begin to study Jesus. To begin to find out what, what, he, what was He like? To begin to see how he was thinking, what he was doing, how he was acting, what manner of a man he was. And ever since, even in the beginning of this year, I thought, okay, well, I've been in these four books. I read them a couple dozens of times already uh, since that year. I, I want to move on and, and, and go on a little further, maybe, you know, get back to the whole Bible reading plan for this, for this coming year. And I just felt like God said, stay a little longer. I want to reveal myself to you. I want to, I want you to see who I am in your life so that you can be transformed into my image, so that you can talk like me, so that you can act like me, so that you can pray like me. So you can have a revelation of the Father that I had. I want to challenge you to not just read the Word of God but be transformed by it. Spend time in God's Word. That's number one. Number two, Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us. Cultivate relationship with the Holy Spirit. In John Chapter 15 verse 12, uh, 26 says this, When Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes from the Father, He will testify about me. Holy Spirit wants to reveal Jesus to you. Uh, this is where all of these, all of these four points that I'm going to give it to you, they're practical, but they're all interchangeable. But yet very distinct in its nature. Holy Spirit is the one that will take the scripture first and foremost and will reveal to you something that you read maybe a thousand times 
but he will point it out. Like a few months ago, I was reading and I said, just that's how I begin to read the Bible. I said, Jesus, I want to know you. Reveal yourself to me. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to me. And I was reading and I believe it was in, 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 in Matthew chapter 12, I believe. Um, it was a story that I've read literally probably a hundred times. It's a place where Pharisees and Sadducees was trying to capture Jesus and saying something so they could arrest them. And one of the things that Pharisees said, he came to Jesus, he says, I know that you are true, you are just, and you are impartial. And it just, these three things just stood out to me. Jesus is true. He's always truthful. He's just. And He is fair. He's impartial. And it just stood out to me. And I was like, Lord, wow. And I began to pray over that scripture. The Holy Spirit began to reveal Jesus to me in that manner. That's how we need to read the Bible. It's not just a history book, it, while it is. It's not just for some cool revelation. Uh, so that we can share in our groups, so we can preach about it. But Jesus, first and foremost, Holy Spirit reveals it, Him to us. So that we can be alikened to Him. Amen. Number three. Holy Spirit. Sorry. We know God through nature. Psalm 19.1. There's many scriptures I'll just share with you too. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of His hands. Nature reveal God to us. <clears throat> In Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says this. For since the creation, the world, God's invisible quality, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature has been clearly seen been understood from what was made, what has been made, so that people are without excuse. What the, what the Apostle Paul saying to Romans that you have no excuse not to know God, because even the nature declares His wonderful works, even the nature declares His mysteries, even the nature declares His goodness. Bible says in another place in the Psalm, the nature declares His unfailing love. Practically, this. Which I saw, I be, something that I begin to practice very recently, inspired by Pastor Vlad, <laughs> uh, is, is to have these times where you get away with the Lord and go out in the nature. Go out in nature. Uh, for me, sometimes it often looks like a, look at, looks like a drive through, especially the Pacific Northwest. It's such a beautiful, beautiful state, beautiful area. When you see the rivers, when you see the lakes, when you see the mountains um, and you just take time to take it in and plunder on the greatness and goodness of God. You know, even scientists say that just 20 minutes a day in the nature can improve your mood, can improve your health, reduction of depression, anxiety, so forth, so on. Because you're literally looking at God and His creation. I want to encourage you to take time with the Word of God, with the Spirit of God. Go out for a walk by the river. Sit out at, by, by, uh, maybe in the backyard at the fire and just meditate on God. Go out on a, on a hike. I mean, I don't like hikes because I don't see no point of going up, but wasting all the energy and then coming down for no reason. But they say it's good for your health, you know, so I like going to a destination, that's my preference, but you know, but it, it does have a destination. Destination is to know God. Destination is to know God. And just be with the Lord. Scripture calls us to be with God. Jesus went to be, withdrew to different places to be with Him. Take time in the nature to be with God. You're gonna, some of you were way too stressed out in your life. If you just do that one part right there, your stress will be limited by half, reduced by half. Your anxiety and worries. When you look at these mountain ranges, that beautiful mountain ranges that we hear, uh, we have here in Northwest, and you see how great and magnificent, magnificent they are, and how God took time to create it so beautifully and so mightily. You look at your problem, that all of a sudden is gonna become so small. 
and you're gonna be God you're so great if you've done this for this life I don't want to say lifeless nature but soulless nature how much more you can do for me who has your soul who carries your spirit inside of me number four is your experiences there's many scriptures but I'll share with you one Joshua 4 uh, verses 6 through 7 when will you when will you when sorry we will use these stones to build a memorial in the future your children will ask you what do these stones mean then you can tell them they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the ark of God of, of the Lord's covenant went across the stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever there are things that God will bring you through that unless you go through it you will not know the nature of God you can read about it you can hear testimonies about it but it's unless you face a deadly sickness in your life and God healed you from it you will know God differently than the one that sits on the chair and says oh yeah praise God for your healing unless you face a deadly car accident and you know that it was only by God's hand that he spared your life you know him as your protector and it's, it's gonna mean completely different to you than just saying or even singing that he's my protector unless in those moments and times when you face serious lack and you're like I can't provide for my children for my family I can't pay my bills and something supernaturally came through and you in that moment realize that God is your provider now you can hear all about it and you can know to a certain level but when you experience him as your provider it means completely different next time when you sing a song God you are my provider you're not just thinking you're not just singing out of your mind you're singing out of your heart next time you're singing Lord you have saved my life you're not just singing it because uh, you know you know somebody that God say protected but you truly rescued you when you sing next time God you are my healer you're not just singing knowing some testimonies of friends that God healed but God has healed you and it just means completely different use these four means to know God use these four means to pursue the knowledge of God when you read Bible search out for Jesus when you read your Bible search out for the Father for his characteristics for his manners for his intent for you and your life don't just read it so that you could put a check mark in your mind that you read the Bible for the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, my message today, by the way, is cultivating the intimacy with God. So that's just the first point. <laughs> See, you truly, you can't have an intimacy with God unless you know how to please Him. But you can't please God unless you know Him. You can't have intimacy with God unless you know how to please Him. But you can't please Him unless you know Him. Many of our relationships, and now I'm talking about earthly relationships, our marriages with our partners suffer. Not because we don't know them. Some of them we, with some people, we lived for 15 years. We know them in and out. We know what they like, what they don't like. Is, but we fail to please them. Most of us here, we have a certain knowledge of God. Yes, we got to continue to go deeper and we got to pursue God and we're going to, we have to strive to know Him more. But most of us, we have a certain knowledge with God. But one of the reasons why sometimes we feel disconnected with God, one of the reasons sometimes what we fail to go deeper with God, it's not that we don't know Him, it's just we fail to please Him. We fail to learn what He likes. Oftentimes when we come to God, we give Him our best instead of giving him what we what he likes 
You know, uh, Gary, uh, Gary Chapman, I believe, wrote the book on five languages of love. And he said the statement that he said, oftentimes we like to love people or express our love to people the way we like to be loved. And then he, the point of the book is, I highly recommend for everybody to read, especially if you have a struggle in marriage, is to learn the love language of your spouse, five love languages, and learn to please them. Some of you in your relationship, in your marriage, your intimacy is struggling. Is because you think intimacy starts in bed. When you strip yourself naked, come on, let's get it on. That's not, that's not the way it works. It starts way before that. It starts way before that. Now, women understand what I'm talking about. Our guys are the ones that are slow to come to that. And, um, you know, God rebuked Israel one, uh, not once. I wish it was once. There was so many times. Whole New Testament is God rebuking Israel. But there was instances where God rebuked His people and called them a harlot and prostitute. Because they used God to satisfy their own needs. And how many of our marriages suffer because we're selfish in our nature. And we use the peep, we use our partner to satisfy our needs. We pray to God because we need something. We, 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 uh, we come to morning prayer when we have problems, we have pain in our body, when we have shortage in our finances. And listen, God is good and He will help you. But you will never have true intimacy with God. He might give you something you ask for based on because you, you are His child and He loves you. But you will not have closeness with God. Prayer does not produce closeness with God. Intimacy does. And not every time you pray, you have intimacy with the Lord. Are you with me? Yes. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 10 says this. And try to discern what pleases the Lord. Try to discern what pleases the Lord. Knowledge of God should lead us to the place where we seek to please God. You read the scriptures because you're trying to figure out what does God like so that I can please Him. Listen, I'm not talking about works right now. I'm not talking about what is the scripture that says, we cannot, uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 8, those who are in flesh cannot please God. I'm not talking about pleasing God out of our flesh. Pharisees tried to do that. They even tied out of the leaves of the trees. They kept things regularly, but they didn't have intimacy. You can't please God out of flesh. I'm talking about searching the scriptures to know God so that you can please Him. Micaiah 6, 5 says this, Mercy and love and justice pleases God. And what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before Him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands, thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of river of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression and my fruit of my body to the sins of my soul? He has told you, O oh man, what is good? See, God is telling you what He wants. You don't have to guess. You know, sometimes in relationships, you know, you have that silent partner. And then you have to guess, you read their mind what they want. And God has spared you of that. He told you literally everything He wants. All you have to do is search out the scripture. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, love, love kindness, and walk in hum humility with your God. What else God likes? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Without faith it is impossible to please Him. God loves faith. God loves pure trust in Him. See when you read this scripture, don't just read it. Oh God loves faith. I'm going to use faith to get something out of God. Wrong motive. Faith to please God. That's what faith is. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. The Bible says that it pleases God when we share our faith with others. 
when we share God's goodness with others. I'm just going to run it through quickly. Just a few things. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2, it says it pleases God when children obey their parents. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6 says that God, it pleases God when we're generous. Do not neglect to do good and share what you have for such a sacrifice as pleases God. Bible says Enoch pleased God and he was no more. He re I mean God took him no more like well yeah he was no more right now here on earth. He walked in such a awareness of God and he seeked an opportunity to please God. You know me and my wife we've been married for a long time and I know what she likes and she doesn't like and uh, but not always I choose to please her, you know, work in progress, and uh, and our intimacy is affected by my choices. It's not that I don't know her; I know her very well. We finish each other's sentences, but it's the desire to please her. It's that drive to find an opportunity in moments where I can make her feel special. And that changes. You know, one advice, one man of God, as a Slavic Shishin, what's his name? Shishikin told me, he said, it's an advice that he received from another minister when he just got married. He said to the man, he said to him, as a man, you must live your life in such a way that you never have to ask for sex. Live your life treating a woman in such a way that she will always be available and willing to be intimate with you. To live our life with God in such a way, constantly cultivating intimacy, constantly looking for opportunity to please Him, constantly looking, Lord, what is that will please you today? God, what are, what are you like? What would you like? And every day He will find opportunities and moments. Sometimes you will look like in a moment where, where you're walking and God drops something in your spirit and says, go talk to this person. You go talk to me and encourage them. God says, yeah, I'm pleased with that because you've helped and encouraged somebody. The other time God will drop in your spirit to wake you up in the middle of the night and you're perfectly not tired and you sense God's calling into prayer because He's seeking a moment. It pleases Him to be with you in a moment that you respond to that. You look for opportunities to be with Him and to please them. It happens many different ways, but you won't know it. You will miss it unless you know Him, what He wants, what He likes, and you seek out to please Him. And ple pleasing the Lord will lead to an intimacy. It's just to be a byproduct. Intimacy, lust, produces fruit. Intimacy produces fruit. Intimacy is a privilege for a very specific people. There's, there's privileges that only belong to intimate people. And um, my heart cry and my heart's desire for you and me that we will be this in relentless pursuit of God, relentless pursuit of pleasing Him. Because then you don't come to pray to get connected with God. It's like a date. You're connecting with Him always, like you and your wife. You know, you're your spouse, your partner, you're, you're, you're connected, but then there's dates, right? And those are important. And it's, it's a continuation. Our relationship. You speak to God and He speaks to you always. You speak to God, you know, I um, my wife to me is a great example in this. You know, um, I have an opportunity to every morning to go and spend time with God. She stays home with the children and she doesn't get that opportunity because she has to take care of the children, be at home. Both of us obviously cannot be gone and, um, and, and I get a chance to go and spend some time with God as 
oftentimes as much as I want from 5, 6 in the morning up to 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, uh, depending on what my schedule looks like, and spend time with God to connect with God. And my wife, you know, she's, she has a lot more responsibilities than, uh, than I, especially with, with, with family. But there's one thing about my wife that I've noticed that she's actually more connected with God than I am. And I'm like, how is that? I pray more than her, or I think. Let me put it this way. I think I pray more than her. Yet I have to go and pray to get connected with God, but she goes and pray to be with God. And then she will be washing dishes and said, Oh, the Lord just showed me something. The Lord prompted me this and this and that. And she, and the, 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 the prophetic, the word of knowledge just flows out of her. God speaks to you in dreams and visions. I, I mean, and, and I, oftentimes I'm the one that's seen on the front doing that, but I'm learning from her really. Because, you know, she just cultivated that connection that everywhere she goes, then God puts on her heart, one time God dropped on her heart to text somebody who did not come for a home group for a while or get connected. She, she sensed that urgency. Then she calls that person and that person was on the way to abortion clinic to abort her baby. She talked to her. She did not abort the baby. Today she's literally thanking her. She's, she's thanking her that she did not abort the child. She named the child after her. And she said it would have been the biggest mistake in my life. When you walk continuously with the Lord. Cultivate that relationship. Out of that, Lord can speak to you anytime. To you, about you, about others. But it's not out of a place of striving. Not even out of a place of fasting and, and, and praying. But it's out of the intimacy of God comes the fruit of God. Your character is transformed. The gifts of God flow freely. But this place is reserved really. It's a, it's a place of privilege. It's reserved for those that are close with God. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to HungryGen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.